Well, this one's up. Alrighty, I did mine. Oh yeah, yours is way down. How's that? That might have moved. Oh, you're talking to me? They're still good. I can't reach them though. You can scoot this way. Huh? You can scoot this way. Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. Morgan is back. <laughs> yes. And y'all are back. back, joining us. Yes, hopefully from a safe, warm house now, right? That's right. How many of you did not have warm houses or water? And some of you probably are still in that situation. Yeah. But we hope you have power at least. Mm -hmm. um, Most yeah. people are getting their water back. Some, we were even listening to a transistor radio on batteries for a while. <laughs> Who would have ever thought, right? Oh my goodness. But I did always say that if anything strikes San Antonio the worst, it's probably going to be a bad freeze. But I never thought. Twice? That, yeah, I guess I know, even then, I. It, it's hard to imagine how it would all work out. But I yeah. just knew that freeze was the one thing that that is that can hit us that we're not prepared for. There's a lot of other things that we're not prepared for, but they won't ever hit us probably like an earthquake. Yeah. Well, or, a tornado, I kind of saw a tornado. Well, tornadoes are usually just, you know, and there's nothing you can do for Yeah, tornado. exactly. There's really <laughs> nothing except build an underground shelter, which, yeah. which nobody's gonna do. <laughs> but um, the thing that, and, and, a, and a tornado is not usually citywide, you know? No, yeah, it's, it's just. Spotty. <laughs> and we've had them, we've yeah. had them before, and uh, you can't do much about that, but except kind of know where to go in your home mm -hmm. or get out of it, yeah. drive away from it if you can. But, mm -hmm. but this is the thing that we knew has hit San Antonio before. Hard freezes have hit. Mm -hmm. But I knew that there's just a chance that it could, it could last for weeks. Ugh. I mean, you know, yeah. days at least, if not well, weeks. Well, in, in parts of Texas, it lasted for two weeks. It, it happened the week before. Mm -hmm. And those northern parts of Texas are more used to it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it just affected so many things this time. In the 80s, the power didn't go out though, right? When y'all got that? No. In 1985, I don't remember the power going out at all. When, yeah. we, had, when we had 13 and a half inches. Yeah, because y'all just enjoyed the snow then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think our power went out at all. Of course, that doesn't mean nobody's power went out. But, yeah. but anyway, we're going to take your calls live today. Morgan and I are excited to talk to you. She's back. And. 737-1200. And we're oh, also yeah. live on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> and last week I had fun because I was seeing who was on there. Oh, yeah. And I was replying to them. And they were asking <laughs> questions. And I, and I thought, well, that's what you get to do from the computer. And I don't get to do that. <laughs> well, I always tell you. It was just Facebook, though. I didn't get to do yeah. Instagram. <laughs> I had it set up right here. And I could see <laughs> myself. I mean, I could see I could see the everything that was being being done. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and so we'll take your calls today and uh, your texts and emails, your direct messaging on the programs that we use, and we'll be glad to talk to you about anything that's on your mind. If it's weather-related or a remodeling question you have, we'd love to do it. Of course, KM Builders also builds custom homes, so very familiar with that, and I think a lot of you know that I started my career in new construction for many years mm -hmm. and then went into remodeling. And I didn't, you know, and I sometimes take for granted all of that experience in building new homes and building multifamily and so forth. <clears throat> but it is um, a foundation that we built this company on. And Morgan is our client experience manager, and she also handles all of our marketing with a great team behind her. And mm -hmm. we appreciate that. So y'all can check out a lot of videos. And uh, I got some comments about our detail series just recently. Oh, really? Great. Uh -huh. And um, that was a really nice, I went out yesterday, got to meet someone yesterday, and we signed a design agreement with a couple that has a beautiful home, and <clears throat> I just want to talk, touch on it a little bit, because it, it's a subject that we're going to, we've done before, talked about, but it was a loft addition, mm -hmm. where you actually create two rooms out of one that's really, really tall, and you put a, you put an intermediate floor in between it. Mm -hmm. And usually those are already two-story homes, so you've got you've got the walkway to it. You just need to 
you just need to put the floor in there. And, and you know, one of the things that they said more than anybody I've ever heard is how bad the acoustics were in those two-story, uh, I guess they're like two-story elevator shafts. <laughs> they, they just echo a lot. They said they cannot understand the words on the TV because of it, and they have a nice system. And so this was in a living room? That yes, they wanted to in a living off. room, yeah. Oh, okay. And it's a, you know, it's it's a million dollar home, and they can't enjoy the, enjoy their their nice sound system. I mean, it's a beautiful room. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> but the acoustics are so bad, and the other thing is, like in this weather, they can't get they warm. can't get warm. Yep, you no can't matter, stay in there. They said for it to get warm in that room when it's cold, it's it's burning up upstairs. Yep. To get to get warm because all that air is rising, and mm -hmm. even if they have two systems. It's just not going to cool that. It's not going to heat, heat up that room. So, yep. so they're definitely excited about changing that and <laughs> creating a beautiful new ceiling and a floor upstairs that's going to be a different use. We're figuring out what that other room. They don't really care what that other room is as long as they get the bottom room working well. Oh, he's still on that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so that is. <laughs> they that's don't just, even care. It so, could just be a closet. They said we'll go through and figure out what we want to do with that room with your design team. But right now we just want this done. We love Aww. what you said. We know it's a solution. We know it's practical. We know it's doable now. And, wow. And so it's it's going to be really cool. And I brought them a set of plans from another project we just sold that did that we did the same thing on. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's a project that we'll be starting soon, out in Spring Branch. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Bull Verde. Bull Verde. It's out in Bull Verde, so we'll be starting another one. So we'll have two of those probably in yeah. short succession. That's very <coughs> cool. And um, so it's really a cool. That's a cool project when you when you solve people's problems in remodeling. That's so neat. I mean, and, and you know, otherwise you look at the home. It's 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 a very new home, million dollar home. You think, what do they need? Well, mm -hmm. everybody needs something, and and that's why we are in the remodeling business. Yep. And we'd be glad to take your calls at 737-1200 if you have any questions, because chances are we probably can give you some insights. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about the, the weather problems that we're having and what can you do to make your home more um, weatherproof. Mm -hmm. Weatherproof. And what do you do if you have a problem right now that you need care of. Yeah, what do you need to be checking? Because Most of you are about to complete the unvolved today, yes. if you haven't already, and you need to get on the plumber's list. If you did not have water running, I encourage you to get on the plumber's list because they're Even really Even if your pipes up. didn't um, didn't bust? Well, that's the thing is if you don't know, if your water hasn't come on yet, you don't know. Ugh. And so call a plumber now and say we want to get on your list because mm -hmm. when you unthaw it, you may find it's leaking somewhere. Yes. And if it is, you're going to have to turn your water off right away and have somebody come in. So you will not have water if, if you have a leak. So mm -hmm. just because it wasn't leaking when it was cold obviously doesn't mean it won't be leaking when it unthaws. So uh, why don't you tell them what you did? <laughs> yeah. So on mine, it was... It was I, what was it, sudden, Wednesday? I went and pro I thought I had insulated all of them. The on day, the, the day before the storm, uh -huh. and I didn't have those covers. I've never needed them before, and so I just, I think before I had done other things, and this time I made an improvision. I put a cup, I cut a hole in the back of a cup, slid it over every spigot, and then and put a glove, plastic glove over the spigot first, and then put a cup over it, and then I sprayed foam insulation in there, and oh. it worked. That sounds smart. It worked, but one of them had a, <laughs> had an escutcheon plate that pushed it a half inch off the wall, uh, and that couldn't be. I didn't want to cut that off, but that was exactly where the pipe actually froze. Busted. Uh huh. And it's spraying out. One <laughs> one of these days, I guess it was. I think it was Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. I guess it had unthawed. Yeah. <clears throat> one of those days when it got a little above freezing and uh -huh. it started spraying water. In the backyard, right? In the back, yeah. I saw it through the window. Unfortunately, we caught it right away. We had our groceries out on the. That's right. Out on the patio because on the on the, the tables because of the weather. Yep. Well, we didn't have power, and so we didn't want our groceries to go bad. And then they, they got all wet, so we had to clean those. Mom wasn't happy about oh, that. Oh man. But we got that fixed. I, I opened up the wall, cut it off, and put a shark bite on it. Mm -hmm. Went to Home Depot, got me some shark bites, and fortunately they had some left of my size. Oh, and fortunately they were open. Yeah, well, they're always, yeah, they're almost always open. But yeah, that day they were. Lots of people in the plumbing aisle, I'll tell you yeah, that for I sure. Bet. <laughs> yeah, 
about. So we definitely, definitely have to, have to know what to do in these times when yep. we can help. Mm -hmm. But uh, b before we go to the break, I want to mention one of our sponsors. Oh yeah, you were in your house all week, so I can guarantee you, you probably needed to be cleaned. And we don't really want to be cleaning right now. We're tired of being home. So give our friends, the maids, a call at 210-822-2526 and tell them that Kane Builders sent you and you'll get $25 off your first clean, which sounds like a really good deal right now. Or you can go to maids.com slash 211. That's 210-822-2526. We'll be right back to the Kane Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Some palenque, palenque grill. What do you call it? Taco palenque. Taco palenque. No, it's not today for lunch. Oh. Taco palenque. Um, street tacos are really good. The, yeah. The corn wraps. Uh huh. <laughs> I've had the street tacos there too. They are really good. Okay. What in the world? There's like bubble wrap under the carpet. Do you hear that? Yeah. Weird. Is it <laughs> really bubble wrap? That's what it sounds like. Maybe know. it's water gun in there or something. And I don't know. Wrinkled up something. Yeah. It's crazy. So I was thinking, um, what are some tips to, you know, ask a plumber how to find a, a good plumber? To call right now, um, one of them is not to, to trust anyone going door to door. That's a red flag. Um, look them up on Better Let's Business Bureau. Um, do they need to check like their roof for leaks, like with the snow piling up? Is that a problem? Because it froze. Yeah, that's good. Do they need to do what because they froze? The roof? And not have any oh. roof damage? Mm. Check that out. Improvised flare. Uh huh. Oh, well, that run. Not long. <laughs> seen that series. We used to have another one called SOS. powering their houses, little heaters, or their refrigerators with their trucks. Isn't that cool? Well, they have a plug on them. I don't think they have a generator. The, the, the engine is a generator. Mm -mm. With generator is getting worldwide attention after Texans use it to power homes. <laughs> Is 20, 21 F 150 hybrid truck. That's why.
Whoa, whoa, go up, go up, go up. Fewer than 500. Available. Trucks with full power on board. Let's see. Hmm. But for real, it did. Where's the generator? Did you show it? Well, I had seen a picture of it. Did you put the top? No. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. And now that <laughs> the power's back on, you can light up your house. My house is lit up again. And that's thanks to the Elite Lighting Designs. And if you'd like your house lit up, day or night, uh, any type of lighting, and it works best at night, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but there's other kinds. I guess and, you could do SOS lighting, that yeah, kind of, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> and give them a call at 573-0594. That's 210-573-0594. And have a beautiful landscape lighting or home lighting, accenting. Oh, I love it. Um, it just, you know, it is the finishing touch. Just like in remodeling, uh, outdoor landscaping, the finishing touch is the lighting. EliteLightingDesigns.com. So we were talking about all the hassles that have happened due to the weather, and one of those hassles is hitting people who are scamming people. Oh yeah, it's sad. What are you seeing on, on that, that there's a lot of storm chasers coming in? The BBB is already putting out notice, the Better Business Bureau, that there are storm chasers already. Um, these ones are in the form of plumbers right now. Right, That are fake plumbers. Yep. And so some tips that we wanted to offer. Uh, my first tip was George Door is a no-go, right. <laughs> most likely. Right, and if you need references on, on plumbers or something like that, go to, go to reputable sources. The one of the you can go is the San Antonio.gov slash DSD, and, that's, and, and that will actually get you the list of, the, of all the contractors that are plumbers in San Antonio area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, Bernie has a list probably you can go to also in other small communities. But get on a list and make sure that it's a licensed plumber. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know you have a friend that can do something for you to stop the water from flowing, it can be quite easy to do that if you can find the source of the leak. And uh, that's the number one thing you want to do is shut that particular pipe off. It may, it usually will be isolated to that area like it was with mine. <laughs> There's a thing called shark bites, and if you if you want to know how to do that, it's real easy. You use a typically you have to use a plumbing tube cutter, and then you cut that pipe off, and you buy a shark bite from Home Home Depot or Lowe's or Ferguson's or the any of the plumbing. Or something? Yeah, any of the plumbing companies, and they are, and they are so simple. What you do is you cut that pipe off, and you just simply tap it on. It's that simple. So it's just like a little cap? Yeah, it's a cap, a brass cap, and you tap it on onto that line and it will stop it. Wow, so you just have to make sure that it's the right size. The right size, right. And a lot of the older homes have the half inch inside diameter, mm -hmm. and the newer homes have three quarter, and so you have to know which size you're dealing with. And if you're not sure, you can buy both, and just they're not that expensive, and just get one of each. Mm -hmm. and, but it's usually gonna be half inch or three quarter. And then you tap that on there. I had never used them before, but I knew we had used them on our job sites for, for demolition. When we cut off lines, we cut the, what we do is we cut the water off, mm -hmm. and that's what you'd have to do too as a homeowner. You'd have to cut the water off at the main, and sometimes you can use a uh, crescent wrench or even a pair of pliers to do that, but sometimes it's so hard to do, you have to have the tool mm -hmm. that has a T-handle on it and so you can buy those too at the plumbing store. That's near your sidewalk, right? Right, near your sidewalk. But you need to know what kind of valve you have. Look at it before you go to the store because they're not all equal. And look inside there and see if it, see what type of uh, device. Take a picture of it. Then when you go to those stores, you can buy the right T-handle and that allows you to turn the water off and on in case you, you know, you need it to see if it's working. 
you turn it on and you may be able to turn it off quickly if it's still leaking. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to be careful how you cut that pipe, copper, or if you have PEX, the, the polyethylene type of uh, tubing, you can still use one of these shark bite adapters to it, and they are just so easy to use. Now that'll give, allow you to probably go weeks without having to worry about getting a plumber out there to, to create a new valve or a new line connection. And that should allow you to use um, water in the meantime for the rest of the fixtures the in your house. Yeah, yep. for the rest of the fixtures. So that's just a little free advice to you. <laughs> Shark bites are the easiest thing in the world. You do not have to know how to solder copper or anything like that, which is a, which is a lot harder to do, especially with water coming out of it. It's it's next to impossible for a, an amateur to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we recommend that you uh, get a professional plumber after you've done that, if, or if you can get them to do it first, they can fix it all up and make sure that it's completely running. Mm -hmm. That's even better. <clears throat> now we talk about what do you do the next to prevent for the next time. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously you're gonna have to fix any water damage if there's siding damage, insulation, you want to get that out of there and you want to get any flooring removed, you want it to dry out. One of the worst things that you can do right now is leave something wet because it will create mold. That's what I heard. I was reading that if your sheetrock was damaged, you need to rip it out. That's right. Do it now and you won't even have any mold. Yeah. If you get it now. If you don't, you're going to have to deal with mold and something that um, Home Depot sells to deal with that is microband. You can put it in a spray bottle and spray it. It will kill the mold for years. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're covered there. But you do have to saturate it and then let it air out. You still want it to air out. You don't want to cover it up wet. If at all possible, you want it to completely dry out. <clears throat> if you have to close it up temporarily because it's letting too much cold air in, you can do that. But later on when it gets warm, you're going to have to let it dry out and spray it again. Mm -hmm. So that's microband. And so if they, how much do they have to cut? Just the wet area if they're yeah. going to do that? Yeah, just cut the wet area and get that, get rid of that. You can mm -hmm. buy little saws that will do that. Do it by hand. Make sure you're not cutting any electrical because a lot of times, you know, there's an electrical line running close by. Mm -hmm. So you always want to kind of pull it out by hand and see what's in there and see if you can feel anything in there so you can avoid cutting an electrical line. You don't want to make it worse mm -hmm. and you certainly don't want to get shocked. So. Because you can't just dry it out, like with a hand with dryer, a dryer or anything. Uh, I mean, in a few cases you might if it was a little bit, but usually if it's an outside wall, which is where this is happening the most, you're not going to be able to get the insulation dry and you can't get past that insulation with your hair dryer. Okay. But yeah, if you could open it up and get the insulation out and then dry it out, that'd be super. <laughs> you know, you can do that. Yeah. And of course the air will dry it out eventually. But if you want to speed that process up, use a hair dryer and, and go ahead and, uh, and then spray your microband if you think there's been any mold in there. You can use a bleach and water solution too, but um, the microband continues to kill any microbial activity in there. So that it's really a, a superior. And that's what we use for our jobs too, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's used by professional uh, ex water extractors and those who, who do remediation. Mm -hmm. They use something like Microban or one of the other similar brands, and that's a really, really good product. That's but good um, we'll talk more about what you can do to waterproof when we come back. But I want to mention my latest sponsor that I'm so happy that I have because they did such great work on my vehicle, and that's Frank's Paint and Body Shop. You may have your, your pet vehicles or your favorite vehicles that you just want to look in perfect condition. So he's going to take care of my road chips on my Hellcat. Mm -hmm. My Hellcat is six years old already, and really? it is, I mean, and there's just a few little road chips on it, and other, other than that, it's its immaculate. It has t less than 25,000 miles on it, and it's six years old, and so I really want to keep this car in mint condition. So he's going to take care of those road chips, and he did did a little ding on our, our Lexus as well, and I mean, you cannot ding. tell. Yeah, a deer horn. <laughs> a deer from a deer <laughs> and you cannot tell and that's what matters yep. is you cannot see it and he can do paintless dent removal uh works with somebody on that and and i recommended it 927-3410 call him that's frank's paint and body shop 210-927-3410 and we'll be right back to the km builders remodeling and design show Please. hey can you quit 
a sponsor's listing on our website. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we should have a tab. Uh huh. I'm gonna turn myself. And it might it might be good to put it like radio sponsors. Okay. Radio show sponsors. Yeah. Then people, then you could introduce it with the radio show when they open it up. Uh huh. It gives them more value. Yeah. And we could put that in the package we offer too. Mm -hmm. So you want to say something about like the cleaning and restoration specialist or anything? Yeah, we should give it yeah, a shout out. Just you know, if you if, if your house flooded, which I call, we've got some really good recommendations. Yeah. So just dripping your pipes doesn't keep it from freezing. Did you drip your outside pipe? I didn't do that one. Because uh, it was on the deck. Yeah, but so? You could have plugged your... Uh, hose? Yeah. I thought it, I didn't, I thought it was inside far enough. I thought I'd insulated it well enough. That's what I've heard is just the truly the best thing is dripping them. It is. He hurt himself. Fell. Because he broke him on too. He's so mean. He hurt himself. 5.15 p.m. Starting the second? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do uh, five, two, two. That's a good one because you're going to be like, Did your dog just die? <laughs> oh, man, every single plant and green grass that was there I've seen is dead. You haven't seen that? Mm -mm. Yours is still good? Well, there's nothing you Thanks can do to about Bio Green. It. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, but you, Bio Green can help you get it back. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we'll get it started <laughs> because you're going to have an opportunity. Yep. What is that?
Reflecting. Welcome back to the Cave Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. And uh, what's your yard going to be like after the freeze? Man, everywhere I've seen, it is dead, dead, dead. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's about to come back to life here in the next week or two because we're going to get probably no more freezes. Oh, I know, thinking. thank goodness. Yeah, so. Please, no know, more freezes. First of March usually is the last, the yeah. last freeze. And so you're, you want your lawn to be fertilized, like mine is going to be, mm -hmm. in the next week or two. It's the perfect time, right? Mm -hmm. And those micronutrients will get it in there quicker than BioGreen does. They use synthetic and natural organic, chem uh, organic fertilizing when they do this. The micronutrients means it's blended into a liquid that is just easily absorbed by those roots and stimulates them and so that you have the best lawn possible going forward. Give them a call. Give my friend Joe Caccino at BioGreenSA.com or call him at 421-9522, 210-421-9522 and tell them that KM Builders sent you. So what can we do to prevent these things from happening in the future? You mentioned it, putting the covers on the spigots instead of doing the makeshift one that I tried to do, which, which did work, except it didn't, go, it didn't go all the way to the wall on one of them. And, mm -hmm. uh, the new, the kind that you hook onto your faucets would have gone all the way to the wall. So I got to say that those little tubey things. Right, I'm gonna buy some. Yeah, I've never bought them before that I can recall, but um, maybe I have and just lost them. I think you lost them because I remember seeing them right. when I was a kid on your faucets, and you kept them on for years afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I remember so making fun of you for it <laughs> well, because you said see, I don't want it. That means it's your fault that I took them off because you made fun of me. Well, I just, I really think you should have just dripped your faucet, <laughs> sir. Yeah, that would have done it. I did the, the other one. I mm -hmm. did one, and the other one I insulated. The reason I dripped one is because I couldn't insulate it well enough. And uh, because it had a line running along and I couldn't get to it, I said, well, this will prevent that from happening. But the ones that I insulated well, I thought were done well enough. But it was on the north side of the house, in the patio. And like I said, just that half inch that I didn't insulate is what did it. So, yeah. you know, that's a lesson learned. Drip your faucets, even yeah. if you think it's good enough. Yeah, drip those faucets if yeah. you're not going to put a really good insulator around it. And so now is the time to do it. Buy the, all, the, all the stuff you need mm -hmm. to have and then put a little place together in your, in your garden bin or in your garage where you're going to keep, keep all of the winterizing of your mm -hmm. home. Just have it in one bin. You know, they have those bins at Costco or mm -hmm. Lowe's. Put it all in there. Put Don't worry the about it. And the same, the same thing should be said about preparing for the cold in general, whether it's not just winterizing your home, but yourself. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, on that end, we were well prepared. We had extra water. Uh, we have, we've been good about having the go bag so that it has, like, uh, plenty of water. Now, we never ran out of water, but we know a lot of people who did. And having extra water, you know, half a dozen bottles per person would be like a minimum. And you can go days if you have six or eight bottles of water each person. Mm -hmm. And that would, that would save you probably in an emergency. 
Now, there's a lot of other things you can put in a glow bag, too, and one of those happens, you know, that we used was our little lanterns, our little LED lanterns that didn't, the batteries didn't ever go down because they're LEDs. So if you're going to get flashlights or lanterns of some kind that are battery operated, I highly recommend two things. One is go with LED because the power source, your battery source, will last a very, very long time because it doesn't use much juice. Mm -hmm. Halogen and, and regular um, conventional light bulbs and so forth can produce a lot of light, but they use a lot of power. And so you don't need a lot of power draw whenever you have limited batteries. Now you want to also have batteries back up, mm -hmm. and we had a few of those, so that was good. Next time we're going to prepare, we're going to have more batteries. We always usually have a pack of batteries, but we were getting low, and I think what we're going to do from now on is just make sure when it gets about those multi-packs, mm -hmm. when they get about halfway done, we're going to we're going to. That's when you buy a new one. You buy a new yeah. one. And I didn't realize we were going through them so much, but with the mouse pads, the remotes, and all that stuff, yeah. the most common battery, the AAA, mm -hmm. is the one that you know a lot of the devices are powered on. Mm -hmm. And so beware of that would be my recommendation. The other thing that I, I did recently, and I'm really glad, is all of my batteries well, let's see, all my flashlights. Do you know what a flashlight is usually used for, Morgan? I bet you don't. Hunting? I don't know. Well, you think of it's a flashlight is usually for using to produce light, oh. artificial light. Yeah. But that's not really true. The, what, a bat, what a flashlight is normally used for is to store dead batteries. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Oh my goodness. I mean, how many times have you flicked on a flashlight and it's dead? And then you open it up and the batteries are corroded. <laughs> That's what usually happens. Well, I can give you a pointer on that one. And what you do is you take some, like, some painters, tape? painters, duct tape. Well, yeah. not duct tape, but painters tape. Yeah. The blue tape is the best one to use because it doesn't leave a residue. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you put your batteries in your device and you put a little blue tape over the over the, uh, the little bump on the, on the positive side of the battery. Mm -hmm. And just before you close it, put a little tape on that. Now, when you go back to use it, you're gonna find out that it won't turn on. And you're gonna say, oh my goodness, the batteries are dead. No, they're not. You pull them out and you, oh, that's right, there's a little piece of tape on there. <laughs> pull that off and your batteries are fresh. Because batteries will go seven years or more if they're not being used. Mm -hmm. And since we it's use smart. our flashlights and our headlamps and our little uh, lamps and lanterns, so little, you're probably going to be fine in the next emergency if you put that little blue tape, that painter's blue tape, get your little yep. one inch blue tape and put ever what size, cut it to whatever size you need and keep that connection positive, um, not drawing. Because what happens is it completes the circuit. Even, so even when it's off, it's Even when getting... it's off, it's drawing, mm -hmm. which is... You know we don't realize it but that's what's happening and so it's pulling the battery power out so even in my truck I keep my battery I keep several flashlights and things but they're always ready to go but all I have to do is just unscrew it pull the tape off put it back on and it's and as bright as can be and then I repeat that process when I store it you know what's funny the just real quick before we go on break one of the things that you didn't think of but y'all were running low on coffee, but y'all still had coffee. Well, the car show guy, he was using his car, and since you have an outlet in your truck, in you could have plugged in your Keurig and right. used it. Yeah, <laughs> and didn't but think I about used, that. that's because I had a gas stove and I had a camping coffee. Yeah, but weren't you running low on the um, no. grounds? No. Oh, okay. No, but we had we had the old camp coffee uh, percolator type, and that's yeah. and that's like nine or ten bucks at uh, at Academy. Get you one of those too, because you can do it on a fire, you can do it yeah. on a gas stove, um, you know, and you got to have coffee in an emergency. Oh yeah, right. I can't imagine. <laughs> and the grounds, so we're buying, and Morgan gave us some, uh -huh. some more grounds because we didn't have a lot because we used those curies, but we did have some. Yeah. And so you got to have ground coffee too in an emergency. That's, that's another yep. necessary item. <laughs> Good sis. Okay, so before we go on break, I want to mention our other sponsor that's been working with me for years on multiple vehicles, and that is Expel. Paint protective film on your vehicle to keep your classic car or your favorite car from, from depreciating in value by having those road chips. Like I said, I didn't do it on the Hellcat, but after Frank takes care of it, I'm going to have it done by Expel. <laughs> And the they also do 
window protection on homes so you can prevent UV heat loss, solar heat gain, and also break-ins. It's break-in resistant. Mm -hmm. is, They'll uh, break the glass, but they can't break the film. That's right. And it sticks to the sides of the window and it prevents people from getting in your home. Call them at 210-430-7712. Call Eric at 430-7712. Or go to expel.com. We'll be right back to the Cave Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Listen to the Happy Handyman Show every Saturday from 3 to 3.30. Your DIY. You know, it's funny. We were walking Scout today, and he was like, you know, this week with just us has done Scout some good. He's skinny. Really? <laughs> yeah. <We're> walking? <laughs> And not overeating from Buddy and Pumbaa's food. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. He's got back his little trimness. And that was just after a week. Wow. That does say something, doesn't it? Yes. Such a little stinker. He's a piggy. He goes over there and his little uh, aggressiveness just goes... <laughs> It's his, it's his domination. Yes. And just stay dominant. Such a brat. He's just crawling around still. Yep. He didn't splint his leg or anything. Well, he kind of did. Oh. The bungee cord? Did you see the bungee cord? What was that on? His leg? Somehow? So the other thing is, if they did have a flood... Look at this water bottle distiller. What? Oh, I've seen that before. Over a fire? I thought, yeah. I thought... Anyways, um, do they need a... Should they... Yeah. No way. Did they, if they can't get somebody quick, do they need to take up the carpet themselves and throw it outside? Mm -hmm. Cause that's gonna just be so moldy. What's this guy's name? Creek Stewart. He's got a great personality too. He's serious about it, but he's very easy to watch. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, little sponsors. That's what it looks like. Yes. Told you. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. We're checking out the generator on the F-150. Oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. They come, some of them come with a generator, but like you said, some of them come with outlets already. You just turn on the truck. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that one, how that works, if it's 
you looks know. Looks like a generator to me. Yeah, I just don't know if you have to turn on the truck to do it. Or oh not. yes, it, yes. And they said you could get about, I think, I believe, twelve hours on the the tank of running the generator. So it has its own gas supply. It mm. used somehow. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> but didn't you say it was the hybrid? Didn't it say it was the well, hybrid? No, it had it in gas and hybrid models, models yeah. That's very interesting. I'm going to have to look into that. That's the first I've ever heard of that. Yeah. Power right. onboard generator explained. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, because I don't think ours would, would, the plug of mine would be strong enough to run appliances on. No, no. Well, probably cool. with like a Keurig, but not your... I don't know, even that. That that uses a lot of, a lot of watts. Mm -hmm. Well, the car show guy was using his... Oh, he was? Yeah, <laughs> that's where I just heard it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he said he used it to make coffee. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not a truck. I don't know what vehicle what he had, him, but yeah. um, he used his outlets to make coffee. Well, he must be innovative stuff. to find ways to make coffee in times of disaster. Yep. Because your mood's a whole lot better. You can think a whole lot clearer whenever you've got coffee or, yeah. or your favorite beverage. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, if you need, you know... If you do have water damage, like you were saying earlier, Morgan, you got to pull that wet stuff out, and that includes carpet. Yeah. Now, if you if you want to save that carpet, then you, can you, you save you, wet? You carpet? can pull it up and uh, and lift it up and let it dry out by rolling it back onto the dry portion, if it's not all wet. And like if you can, caught it quickly. Yeah, you want to try to vacuum it up with a wet vac and get all the water out of it you can, and then get it off the floors, pull it back, pull back the pad. And if you can, you, you, you uh, pull it pull it all the way out and set it outside, let it dry. But that's uh, you know, there's a seam in there somewhere that you got to be careful about if it's joining into other rooms. Mm -hmm. If it's one room by itself, it's a lot easier to just pull the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. But if you cut that seam, you may have a repair that you can't make completely perfect again. So you have to be careful if you're going to save that car. Sounds like a good opportunity to put some LVP in. Right, <laughs> right, and we can definitely do that. Oh, and, I think and, he's still talking about mm -hmm. And so if you'd like to, to get somebody to do the extraction, water extraction, we can send you names of that and mm -hmm. get on their list because everybody's hooked up on that oh, too yeah. for the re remediation of water or mold. Yep. And we do have a caller, right, Sarah? We do have a caller. So Martha, we'd be glad to take your call. If you're there, go ahead. How can I help you? I, um, I have a question regarding uh, something that uh, has occurred with my daughter's home. And she was uh, asking if there was something that could be done. So y'all were on and I thought I would ask. Um, they purchased a home in New Braunfels uh, built by Rosh Coleman, I believe it is. And they've been there less than six months. And after about three months, they had two cracks in the wall. They fixed it. But then after this freeze, she said, she just called me last night. She goes, oh, mom, it looks so horrible. And there's two additional cracks. And the back door and the pantry door will not close. So apparently there's been a foundation shift or something. And the people told them not to worry, that there's a one-year warranty. But then she's like, well, what's going to happen after the one-year one warranty expires? What can I do to prevent this from happening? Or, you know, where should, you know what should she do next? Well, she's right. If, if the, you know the one-year warranty only takes care of it for a little while, if they if they're patching up sheetrock, that's not even taking care of the real problem. She needs to call a foundation expert um, to go out and look at it. There's there's uh, foundation engineers that will that will give a report, and if she has to, she should pay for that. But eventually, this is all going to be covered by by the company because they are a big company and they will do that. Uh, cover that, but you may have to prove your point. But you don't want to let that one-year warranty expire, and that's a very short warranty for a foundation. And so, so you definitely want to get get an engineer to look at it. The fact that she has already complained about it and put a notice before the warranty is up is definitely in her favor. And so, she just need to keep that up. There's a lot of lawyers that will be glad to help her with that, but um, she'll be better off if she just goes ahead and and uh, tries to get them to repair the foundation, either that or either that, or if it can't be repaired and, and her engineer does not um, agree with it, well, then they're gonna owe her even more money, but she needs to document it, document it with an engineered report. 
Okay. All right. Well, I knew I was calling the right place. So I thank you so much and I'll pass that information on to her. Yes. And if you need any more help, just give us a call at, or look us up at kmbuilders.com and we'll be glad to to help you make sure that, you know, nothing, nothing's going wrong for you. That's a serious issue that you need to take good care of the right way. Thank you so much for all your information. You're welcome. Thanks for calling the show. I'm glad we caught you at the right time. And, and just like that, you can give us a call, but as since it's almost the end of the show, we do want to mention that you can look up our sponsor um, by calling us. And the easiest way to remember is 680-KMCO, because that's how you call <laughs> us, or you can look us up at kmbuilders.com. And that, of course, gets you an appointment with Keith if you would like to meet about a project. Details, room additions, kitchens, bathrooms, two stories, whatever you're interested in, we can do it. And of course, repairs and things that you want advice on, we do that at no charge as well. So we're glad to be of service to you. Thank you for joining us on the show today. We both enjoyed the calls and mm -hmm. talking to you. <laughs> we'll and, see you next week then. And where oh. can they find more information, Morgan? Um, Facebook at KM Builders or Instagram at KM Builders. And you can catch all of our videos on YouTube too. That's right. And Morgan is our client experience manager. You'll meet her in the process eventually. And that's because <laughs> at KM Builders, we have designed the experience so you can experience the design. The show is paid for by KM Builders. The views and opinions expressed are those.